education and the economy walk hand in hand. The absence of the first makes the second impossible. Today's Jamaica Magazine explores developments in both areas. Hi there, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Welcome. <laughs> Shelby, I want to you. I'm making it look like you have a whole world on your shoulders, Amasa. Ashley, I'm tired. Every day I the same thing. I can't take this no more. I what happened now? No, my boss, man. Every day I have me assign some documents. I'm supposed to assign for with some big money. And when I say, sir, I'm not supposed to assign for them here. I'm going to say, you want your job or what? But see, uh, report him. You hear what I'm saying, girl? Report him to your designated officer for the Complaints and Protected Disclosures Unit at the Integrity Commission. And guess what? Don't worry yourself. The information that you give will be kept confidential. You sure? Girl, me positive. Under the Protected Disclosures Act, you can make a report as an employee. And once it is made in good faith, then your boss really and truly can do nothing about it. And if you know one call, you can make an anonymous complaint under the Integrity Commission Act of 2017 by simply downloading and sending in a report in proprietary form from the Commission's website. Just create one email address with no identity attached, so if they have follow-up questions, they can contact you. But sis, make sure that the report you bring is true and you don't have no bad intentions. Okay, me I'm gonna do it. If you or someone you know has experienced or observed matters involving corruption, improper conduct, or impropriety within the workplace, you are being encouraged to file a report with the Integrity Commission by calling their anti-corruption hotline at 876-926-0001 or emailing cpd at integrity.gov.jm. The Integrity Commission, united against corruption. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Thursday, September 7, 2023. The pilot project for introducing a cashless system to the Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC, should begin soon. Transport Minister Daryl Vaz gave the update during Wednesday's post-cabinet press briefing at Jamaica House. We are expecting that by August next year, we should be in a position for the pilot project to have ended and for the procurement process to have ended in order for us to go cashless. He says this is one of the measures to address the millions of dollars being lost each year due to the pilferage of diesel oil and uncollected bus fares. Once that is done, obviously the burden on the Ministry of Finance, the Consolidated Fund and the taxpayers of Jamaica will be radically reduced because as you know, JUTC subsidizes billions of dollars a year, and a lot of those billions are as a result of the two issues that I just spoke about. To address the pilferage of diesel fuel from the bus company, government is moving to refleet the JUTC with CNG and electric-powered buses. Meanwhile, the transport minister says government will be taking more aggressive steps to prevent or prosecute the destruction of public assets. Minister Daryl Vaz made that assertion on Wednesday as he addressed the weekly post-cabinet press briefing at Jamaica House. In response to a stone-throwing incident on Monday regarding one of the recently bought JUTC buses, the minister says stronger legislative provisions are among the actions being considered to deter such actions. We cannot spend this amount of money to have either idle or orchestrated a tax on the government's property because the government's property is the taxpayer's property. So that is something that I'm going to be looking at in relation to current legislation and whether or not it requires amended legislation because the time is now for this to stop. The recently introduced C5 Electronic Entry Portal, or Immigration Customs Declaration Form, will allow arriving airline passengers to benefit from greater ease through customs. That assertion comes from National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang. 
He was speaking on Tuesday during a tour of the Norman Manley International Airport to observe firsthand incoming travelers utilizing the electronic immigration customs declaration form. The idea is to make it easier for the Jamaicans who are coming home to get home. It's a service to our population. In addition to that, of course, it's an easier process for the visitors we're getting in the tourism sector because tourism is now our, one of our you know, major contributors to economic activity. The rollout of the new system is being done by the Passport, Immigration and Citizenship Agency, PICA, in partnership with Jamaica Customs. Travelers to the island are mandated to fill out the immigration form online, replacing the paper document previously issued on various airlines destined for Jamaica. Minister Chang says the new system is a crucial element in the national security apparatus of the country. He asserts that it not only helps with revenue generation, but also plays a vital role in helping to eliminate threats from criminal elements who use the airport to traffic illicit goods. The security minister and deputy prime minister says it also supports government's push to maximize Jamaica's strategic geographic location for transshipment purposes. Jamaica is an ideal location for moving in the Caribbean. It is considered the best location for transshipment. Uh, by any measure, we sit at a strategic spot between North and South America, crossroads for the Americas literally, and therefore we have to intro in Monto about as well. So we have to introduce modern techniques and use electronics to imp improve our efficiency and quality of service. The minister is reminding the public that the online declaration form is completely free to be accessed by travelers through the airports. He adds that e-gates will also be added in the future to further ease congestion in the arrival hall at the NMIA. Jamaican students saw better results in this year's Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate, CSEC, and the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Exam, CAPE, when compared to last year. Education Minister Favor Williams revealed the results during a press briefing at Jamaica House on Wednesday. The data shows that 84.1% of CAPE students passed at least one subject. Of the 34 subjects sat, 18 showed improved pass rates over 2022. Most notable were mathematics, English A, and theater arts, which all improved by more than seven percentage points. The takeaway from what we're presenting today is that there is recovery, uh, 23 versus 22. Uh, in, in a lot of areas, we are back uh, where we were prior to the pandemic but in some we still have um, some, uh, some recovery to go. For CAPE, there was an average pass rate of 90.6% for Units 1 and 2. The Education Minister is also reporting high English success rates for students who did the City and Guilds test. And finally, four tax offices have received ISO 9001-2015 certification from the National Certification Body of Jamaica, NCBJ. This certification means Tax Administration Jamaica, TAJ, has acquired the seal of approval for being in compliance with the internationally recognized standard for quality management systems. The certified locations are the St. Andrew Revenue Service Center in Constant Spring, the Maypen Tax Office, Spanish Town Tax Office, and Falmouth Tax Office. The tax authority is one of 15 entities identified by the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service to undergo the World Bank funded certification activity. As part of the certification process, TAJ had to improve its processes, documentation, and systems. Commissioner General of the TAJ, Ainsley Powell, says this move will go a long way in strengthening the country's economic program as doing business with the revenue services continues to improve and become easier. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. More Jamaicans are being employed. Export revenue is increasing. Tourism continues to fill the coffers and mining is seeing a rebound. 
they all add up to good news for the Jamaican economy. Let's review the latest markers of Jamaica's economic performance. Today on Going for Growth, we look at the country's economic performance, especially as it relates to the latest employment figures. Plus, which sectors showed the best results for the April to June 2023 quarter? Stay with us. Jamaica's unemployment rate continues its downward path, indicating a positive sign for the country's economy. Unemployment fell to an all-time low of 4.5% in April this year, 1.5% less than April 2022. The figures were released in the April 2023 Labour Market Survey by the Statistical Institute of Jamaica, Statin. In April 2023, there were 61,300 unemployed persons and this was 19,700 less compared to April 2022. This was influenced by the fall in the number of unemployed females. The male unemployment rate was 3.4%, while the unemployment rate for females was 5.7%. The survey also shows that the number of employed people increased by 43,300, pushing the total to over 1.3 million. Celebrating this achievement, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says this puts Jamaica closer to full employment. This is the best news that our economy can have. It means that our economy continues to expand, but what it really means is that more Jamaicans have income. It means that more Jamaican families can do much better than they were doing before. We are building Jamaica. Other positive economic indicators include a 32% increase in revenue from exports with a value of 677 million US dollars. This is for the January to April 2023 period. Most of the earnings came from domestic exports, specifically in the mining and quarrying and the agriculture industries. Improved performance in the tourism and mining industries contributed to an estimated 1.5% growth for the economy for the April to June quarter this year. The increase in more people being employed was also a factor. For the mining sector, activities increased by 163% to become the major contributor of the 1% growth for the goods producing industry. Meanwhile, tourist arrivals for the review quarter stood at 705,031 visitors, an increase of 14.2%. Total visitor expenditure increased by 19.7% to over 368.7 million US dollars. Those figures were released by the Planning Institute of Jamaica, PIOJ. The whole turn for the review quarter largely reflected increased capacity utilization in the mining and quarrying industry, the continuing continuation of the growth momentum in tourism-related industries, increased demand spurred by higher levels of employment, as well as increased business and consumer confidence relative to the corresponding quarter of 2022. The progress reflects a nine consecutive quarters of economic growth and demonstrates the government's fiscal discipline and strategic approach to creating an environment for infrastructure and social development. The figures also look good for the January to June period, which reflect economic growth of 2.9%. The services industry grew by 3.5%, while the goods producing industry grew by 1%. The industries which were estimated to have recorded the largest increases during the first half of the year were mining and quarrying up 137.7%, hotels and restaurants up 18.5%, other, other services up 11.4%, and transport, storage and communication up 6.1%. According to the PIOJ, further growth is projected for the July to September quarter. For July to September 2023, growth in output is anticipated to be within the range of 1% to 2%. This projection is based on expected growth in most industries. Prime Minister Holness says Jamaica's fiscal policies have allowed the economy to bounce back at a quicker pace than usual from a shock such as the COVID-19 pandemic. 
It's the first that we have had a shock. Yes, we have had a fallout, but the recovery has been so fast and rapid. Still, Jamaica and other countries are dealing with a serious increase in inflation coming out of the pandemic. But that too is heading in the right direction. In the meantime, the government is addressing its impact through the Public Sector Compensation Review and overhauling of the PATH program to reach more people in need and through initiatives to drive skills training and employment among young people. Government policy is not merely focused on economic statistics. At the heart of it, at the core of it, it's about how the economy serves people. It serves them through jobs, and it serves them by creating the basis for a social safety net system that protects the most vulnerable in the society. And so, as the economy continues to grow, it increases the capacity of the government to provide necessary public goods and services such as health care, education and social protection. It also sends a positive indicator to investors that Jamaica is a good place to do business. The quest to keep Jamaica on an economic growth path will require tapping into the earning potential for new industries. One of those is expanded maritime capabilities with the introduction of dry docking services. On August 24, Jamaica's first ever floating ship repair dock arrived. Our next feature explores the plans for the dry dock and what it is expected to bring to Jamaica. The German Shipyard Repair Jamaica, GSRJ, is embarking on the development of a shipyard with the capacity to repair and maintain commercial vessels that visit the island's ports. A key component of this shipyard will be its dry docking capabilities. Dry docking is the term used when a ship is taken into a shipyard for repair purposes. It's expected that this project will allow for the servicing of any steel whale traversing our currents, weighing up to 20,000 tons and measuring approximately 250 meters long. As it is, there are no shipyards with dry docking capabilities in the region. This will be the first. The German Ship Repair Jamaica Limited has been in operation now for the last four to five years and we've already been doing wet repairs in Kingston. Now we're expanding those services to be able to offer the dry docking services. Jamaica is blessed to be ideally located along the east to west shipping traffic region through the Panama Canal heading to North and South America. And if there's one thing to know about this famous passage, it's that it's host to many ships making trade easier. Jamaica currently serves 12 major shipping lines and has weekly port connections with over 100 port facilities uh, in terms of cargo movement in and out of the region. The region? With Jamaica being a transshipment port, it, it, it is only fitting for Jamaica to also offer the services of having a shipyard where these vessels can seek to have their vessels repaired or maintained as necessary. The location of the shipyard is, is also significant because we're in Kingston Harbour and Kingston Harbour, as many people know, is the seventh largest natural harbour in the world. But this part of the harbour, which is known as Harbour Head, is one of the calmest areas of the harbour. So it is ideally suited, and this is where a lot of ships would love to bring their ships here. As a requirement for international certification standards, all commercial vessels need to be dry docked at least once every five years. With Jamaica being host to one of the region's transshipment ports, this development will have a myriad of benefits for the country and citizens, chief among them, employment. 
We expect to be training and developing as much as 100 uh, persons for working in the shipyard in initially, um, with the potential for us to grow upwards of that over the next few years once it is successful. The project is a significant investment and will bring more economic growth and job creation to our country for the benefit of our people. Hart is uh, very, very keen on working with us to develop uh, an apprenticeship model. Uh, let's call it our newly being developed, our Jamaican apprenticeship model, which will see young persons getting trained in some of these very, very highly skilled areas, such as the welding, engine repairs, AC and electrical um, works for the maritime industry and so on. The international classification standard that the ships have to meet means that these persons will be trained at an internationally certified level, which means possibilities for them will be broadened. But for the GSRJ, the possibilities have only just begun. There are many ships that are from Europe, for instance, or Asia, that are operating in the region and they don't leave the region unless they need to get dry docking or maintenance repair services. Right now, because there is no, there, the, 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 the capacity for shipyards in the region is so limited that many of these ship owners choose to send their ships all the way back to Europe to get repaired. Already since we have made this announcement that we're, Jamaica is now embarking on developing a shipyard, we have been getting numerous calls from some of these ship owners and ship agents who want to know program to start bringing their ships here. If you're a regular Jamaica Magazine set reviewer, you know we regularly head west on the weekend. Well, the weekend has come early for you as we spotlight a special education-focused trip out west. Students, teachers and staff at the Albertown High School in Trelawney are breathing a sigh of relief, while teachers and students at two St. James Primary Schools and one high school are expressing gratitude to the Ministry of Education and Youth and other stakeholders. We tell you why on this episode of Western Roundup. Stick around. More than 800 students, teachers, and auxiliary staff at the Albertown High School in Trelawney are breathing a sigh of relief with the recent installation of a 20,000-gallon tank and other rainwater harvesting mechanisms at the institution. This alleviates the need to purchase water at $40,000 per load from Falmouth in Trelawney or from as far as Christiana in Manchester. We are really grateful for this initiative and I'm confident that it will serve to benefit us as teachers and the student body. We are thankful and we trust that the students and teachers will use it and be grateful. This is an area where we have a lot of rain and we are now going to be able to take advantage of this resource so that we can solve a problem that we have been having here for years. The school's water storage capacity has been increased to 50,000 gallons. Commissioning the $4.5 million investment into service, Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Senator Matthew Samudo, hailed the project as an investment in the future of the nation. We will make the investments in the capacity of water storage right across the length and breadth of this country, especially in rural schools to ensure that an hour of learning loss can be attributed to water supply. 
the initiative was spearheaded by the Rural Water Supply Limited and included the laying of 350 feet of pipe, installation of guttering, and the donation of eight black tanks and a pumping system. Meanwhile, the residents of Martha Bray in Trelawney also benefited from an upgraded water intake system. This initiative will allow the National Water Commission, NWC, to harness an additional 5 million gallons of water daily, increasing the overall production at the Martha Bray Water Treatment Plant from 80 million gallons to more than 11 million gallons. One of the options presented was to expand the Martha Bray Water Treatment Plant and it was accepted and it was expanded by 5 million gallons per day and the vision for the Marta Bray is that ultimately it can be expanded by a further 10. Over in St. James, the students and staff at the Barrett Town and John Rollins Success Primary Schools along with the Spot Valley High School benefited from a donation of equipment valuing US $15,000 from the U.S. Southern Command Humanitarian Assistance Program. The items donated included three multifunction printers and three interactive whiteboards. The donation was facilitated by the National Education Trust, NET. This project is a collaboration between the Department of Defense and the Ministry of Education and Youth here in Jamaica. Projects like this empower students, empower teachers, and the community as a whole. The donation of smart whiteboards and multi-function printers symbolize the partnership and commitment between the United States and the country of Jamaica. Hailing the donation as a boost to the sector, Regional Director in the Ministry of Education and Youth, Dr. Michelle Pinnock, says students will now have a better opportunity to be empowered through technology. The Ministry of Education and Youth take very seriously the technological improvements required in each school and understand that in order for children and young people to be prepared for their future, to make them future ready, we have to start in the Jamaican classroom. We believe in Western Jamaica through STEM education, once we're able to motivate our young people, get them critically thinking, getting them collaborating, getting them communicating with others, then our creativity will take us to the next level. Expressing gratitude on behalf of the schools, principal of Barrettown Primary, Anthony Murray, says the donation will increase the capacity of the institutions to better deliver STEM education in the classroom. For Jamaica schools to provide the first work and competitive students that we need, so that they can match the global market. Our schools must be equipped with high quality training equipment and resources to aid in the delivery of the curriculum. And as such, your donation today of ITC equipment is a step in the right direction. And that's all for the program. As usual, thanks for joining us on this episode of Western Roundup, where we take you from the corners of St. Elizabeth to the hilly terrains of St. Anne. Remember to send your feedback to jismobay at jis.gov.jm. Until next time, take care. This is where the Jamaica Magazine journey ends for today. Another is being prepared as we speak for your viewing pleasure tomorrow. Remember to join us then, right here on this station. Access all your JIS content on our website, jis.gov.jm. Until next time, I'm Adrian Atkinson saying thanks for making it Jamaica Magazine and the JIS. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.